As Irma continues to move, move slowly toward the Florida Keys, Tampa is bracing for their first direct hit from a hurricane in more than a century. The force of Hurricane Irma starting to whiplash the Florida coast Saturday after ripping through Cuba with well over 100 mile per hour winds. That monster hurricane, the strongest ever on record in the Atlantic Ocean, slamming into the Caribbean already, turning deadly, ravaging islands. Going to be Going out to fly Irma today. At this hour, Irma still tracking right toward Florida, but there are several other states now in the possible path. out of the bottom of the airplane and they'll collect that as they fall. It'll collect the temperature, they'll, they'll, it's got a GPS sensor in them to collect the winds, to collect the pressure, and we'll drop these in various areas of the storm to find out weather data. The strongest Atlantic hurricane in more than a century, pounding the Cuban coast, bending trees, tearing roofs off tops of homes, and causing catastrophic damage. The Bahamas, lambasted by Irma's fury as she now shifts westward, putting the Florida Keys in line for a direct hit. Call sign's gonna be Teal 7 Going out to fly Irma today. Deadly Hurricane Irma ripping through the Caribbean as it moves towards normally sunny Florida. A vacationer's paradise during the winter months, the Caribbean now fearing a grim tourist season as it looks to recover from the massive devastation left in Irma's wake across prime holiday destinations like St. Martin and Barbuda. Four storm has slammed into the lower Florida Keys, lashing the island chain with winds of up to 130 miles per hour. 
The hurricane made landfall in Cuba late on Friday. It engulfed villages, causing widespread damage and leaving whole communities homeless. The eye of the storm has now reached the Florida Keys, bringing extreme winds that are expected to last for the next few hours. All residents had been ordered to leave amid fears that a storm surge reaching 15 feet could hit the islands, most of which are only a few feet above sea level. One person has been confirmed dead in the Keys. As the storm is expected to move north to mainland Florida, more than a million homes and businesses are now without power and some 50,000 people have taken refuge in shelters. That was the ocean. This looks like what wow. you see in tsunamis. When a tsunami happens and the, the, all the water pulls away from the coast before it comes back in, these guys are walking on the ocean floor because the wind is so strong that it pulled all the water out of the ocean, out of that. What that, is the wind speed right you think there. for it to be able to do that? Well, it went through the Bahamas at 160 miles an hour. So that's enough energy that it pulled the ocean out from the land. And it was like that for, for almost half a day, I thought, thought it was. I mean, the water yeah. eventually came yeah, back. And then, was... Yeah, of course, and then the water comes back. But that's how strong these wow. winds are. That's what we're talking about. So. All, that, all that storm surge water has to come from somewhere. From someplace. That's exactly the point. Here, henceforth, when you Wikipedia, look at this in Wikipedia in a year, you'll see that this storm made first landfall in the United States at Kudjo Key, uh, just, just to the west of Isla Mirada, uh, at just after 9 o'clock in the morning. And it will be a very long day and into the night. Uh, we're not expecting, there, there will be a second landfall, according to the meteorologists. If it's in southwest Florida, along the Naples, uh, Collier County, Lee County, Charlotte County line, which is the lower left of your screen there. If it's there, it'll be in six, seven, eight hours. If it goes higher, it could be nightfall around Tampa. And if it continues over the Gulf of Mexico, potential for strengthening is there. And this could eventually become a storm that goes even farther up the coast. The truth is the meteorologists do not know. They, they, these storms wobble and move left and right as they go forward. And exactly where those wobbles are going to happen, which would create landfall, uh, is unknown. And the reason that that matters so much is because the strongest, most powerful winds of all are wrapped around that tight center, the center of that eye, uh, just all along the walls of that eye. That's where the worst of the winds are with the most destructive winds. And certainly the storm surge is going to be a problem for a very long time. Sustained winds yesterday morning at around 10 a.m. and it continued to get worse throughout the day and night. We were up until about 3:30 on Fox News, uh, and at that point the winds were sustained 50 to 60. But when we got up after about three hours of downtime, look behind me. I'm going to step away so you can see the rage of the storm come through Jefferson. Now we're in a protected area. We're in a we're in a Cat 5 rated three-story hotel, so we're kind of out of the wind, if you want to think or call it that, for uh, at least a little bit. So just look out beyond us. Even five feet from behind where I'm standing, you can see 
there's trees, snap. There's one tree across there that's got to be about four feet around, Shepard, and about maybe 15 feet up. It is snapped absolutely in half. So you can see the power of Irma as she comes ashore. And she comes ashore, Shepard, also, again, after being battered since 10 a.m. yesterday morning. Uh, by the wind meter, which, which I have, it shows just here 75, 80 miles an hour when I put it out uh, just beyond from where our protected sport part is. Um, and the rain just blows, Shepard, uh, significantly. We know also about midnight yesterday, we went across the island. People know how the Largo, Key Largo works. It's about a mile wide at, its, at the area where we're located. On the ocean side is where we were yesterday. We went over there around midnight last night. It was already under three feet of storm surge, and that was at midnight, way before uh, the, the rage of this storm has come through, Shepard. We're on the bay side right now. The bay water hasn't come up yet, but as you can see, we're still getting it from the easterly direction, Shepard. Man, uh, how, how many more hours of this kind of thing are you guys expecting, Adam? They're telling us we could have another 12 hours, Shepard, and we haven't had power since most of this Key Largo area, and for that matter, the Northern Keys haven't had power um, for, gosh, it's got, well, 10.30 yesterday morning it went out for us, um, and it has just been nonstop wind. You know, we've had other hurricanes before, you have as well. You don't usually have it for this long unless the, the hurricane is stalling off the coast. In this case, the hurricane is just absolutely blasting the Keys. You saw a couple of people here at the hotel. There are a few folks that could not get out. They could not get a flight. They could not drive. And I'll tell you from being here for the last four days, what they decided to do was find a Category 5 rated hotel. And this owner decided to stay open to help those people. Other hotels did not do that for the liability purposes and also the unknown purposes of what this hurricane might do. At one point, Key Largo was where the eye was supposed to cross. We're not going to get the eye, I don't think, Jeffrey. We haven't seen the report this morning. Uh, in the last hour, but we're going to be close enough, obviously, to, to get some pretty, pretty horrific conditions, Shepard. Adam Housley live with us there. <music> Channel live here in the city of Miami, uh, driving around. This is Northeast Miami Dade County, I'm told, or Northeast Miami, I should say. Uh, it is a howler of a day there, and consider that the storm is off the other coast. Uh, it's coming up the west coast of Florida, and it has already hit the Florida Keys. The forward motion is so slow that it's just going to sit and spin, as they say in the Weather Center, uh, and could deliver hurricane force winds for as long as 12 hours, tropical storm force winds longer than that. Carol Stroud is riding out this storm in Key West and is live on the line with us. Carol, what can you tell us? How are things there? Things are pretty rough. It's rainy and it's scary. Where are you? I'm in the Senior Citizens Building on Kennedy Drive, and it's safe. You know, we're safe here, but I feel for other people out there. Do you have yeah. electricity? Yes, we have. They have generous power. Uh huh. And have you lived in Key West for a while? I've lived in Key West all my life, born and raised. Compare this to others that you've experienced. It's no comparison. This is the just extreme storm I've ever seen. You know, I, I, I always get concerned with conks because they're a, they're a resilient type and they're close to their land and close to their, their boats and love their lifestyle there. And, and often the conks won't leave. And, I, and we know but many, many residents of Key West have stayed behind, sometimes with their boats. Uh, do, do you know people like that? And how much concern do you have? Um, I, I know a lot of people in the state, a lot of the punks, uh, my family, you know, I have four uncles and an aunt that are down on Thomas Street. Hopefully they're okay. They're in an old punk house. And, uh, but they're, you know, I got two sick uncles in there, but they're being taken care of and hopefully they're okay. Why you know, did you but, decide yeah, to stay, Yeah, we, we don't like to leave. I don't blame you, but wh why, why did you decide to stay? I don't want my dog. That's not my reasons because he's never traveled in a vehicle, and um, the traffic and the gas situations on the road, and I really don't like getting on the road. I'd rather be stuck here under a stairwell or something than on the road. Well, Carol, our local station WSBN7 in South Florida is driving along the North Bay Village Causeway now. This is the causeway that connects Miami to Miami Beach right at 79th Street. These are live pictures. Uh, it's not as bad up in Miami as we've heard it is down there. W what have the winds and rain been like for you, Carol? 
Oh, the wind. It was really blowing. I took some videos. It's on my Facebook page. If anyone wants to check it out, they're all Walter's and Shroud. And um, it's crazy. It's crazy out there. That's all I know. Well, you know I have been fortunate to stand on the balcony and see it. Huh? I, we don't want you to go outside and put yourself in any danger. If you have looked already, what did you see out there? Uh, we're getting a lot of water on the roads. A lot of trees are down, big trees. Over here in the housing authority area, there's some big almond trees down. And I can't really see because the rain is so thick. I can't see past the uh, point down school. This is video for our viewers. This is video that Carol shot for us. Uh, that, that actually is on her Facebook. And Car Carol, it looks, when was this taken? This was taken this morning. The, the latest one was taken this morning. How much it's damage do you think around there? Um, I think it's going to be devastating, really. On the phone with us, Senator, how are they how are they faring down there? You know, it's bad. It's nasty here. Uh, Chef, I mean, you, in your time here in Miami at SBN, you remember, you know, well, you were here. You weren't here for Andrew, but were you were you here in '92? I was in, I was over in Fort Myers for Andrew, but you were in Fort Myers I feel for Andrew, you. and you were down. Yeah, so you know, and and we're not even getting the direct hit. So if it's nasty here, I want people to. If you're in Sarasota, if you're in Tampa, if you're in you know, any of those cities, Fort Myers, Naples, anything along the west coast of Florida, southwest coast of Florida, if we're getting it bad, it's going to be really bad for you. People need to start thinking that way and at this point, hopefully, have finalized their prep. You know, we're getting winds, gusts, sounds like up to hurricane, strong tropical storm, a lot of rain, worried about the storm surge. But all in all, despite how nasty it is here, we're fortunate compared to what's headed in, in what really is the worst case scenario in, in uh, southwest Florida. It really is. And this is going to be a Florida storm for at least the next 24 hours. Senator, when it's all over, uh, there's going to be an enormous amount of recovery that's necessary, and it's going to yeah. require many, many billions of dollars. On the heels of what happened to our friends in Texas, how in the world is the federal government going to come together? Well, I think it's one of those times you just are grateful that you live in the richest, most powerful country in the world um, because we have the resources to help our, our fellow Americans and, and to do it quickly in a way that's responsible. Um, it'll be a lot of emergency funding, and, and you know we can't calculate what that is. The, a, a direct hit on Tampa Bay from a Category 3 storm coming from the south or the east or the west is one of the worst-case scenarios you can imagine in terms of storm surge and the like, the, not just in property damage but threat to life. and. And the other concern we have, of course, is that a lot of the support material that's supposed to come here, FEMA, the trucks to restore utilities, they're all up in Georgia, Alabama, uh, potentially South and North Carolina. They're kind of in the path of the storm, so they can't even start moving until this thing goes through. So there's a lot to be concerned about. But the most important thing is if we can save lives and keep people out of areas where they're going to need to be rescued after a storm, that I think is going to make it easier, not easy, but easier to kind of get the restoration work going. You know, I know some people who evacuated from Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood area up to Fort Walton Beach in Okaloosa County in yeah. the Panhandle, and now it looks like this, who knows, a, a slight jog 20 miles to the west, and this is their storm. Yeah, Shep, so this is one of those things you got to think about. We've never seen this, uh, this sort of thing uh, before where you have all these people kind of leaving uh, an area thinking they're fleeing from the storm, and then they wind up kind of moving to a part of the, of the state that's in the, eye, in the storm. So now you think about it, you're not just far from home. Uh, you're you're also trapped in a community or that that's not your home, maybe in a hotel or the like. At this point, one of my warnings was this is no time to try to dodge the storm. And now, if I have a friend in Northeast Florida, so maybe it's the time to drive down. You're going to drive down I-95 no in a way. tropical storm. It's very dangerous at this point. So, at this point, I hopefully people are in a place that is safe. And but I mean safe is safe from wind, but also safe from water. I had a very close friend yesterday in an evacuation zone in Tampa that didn't want to leave. Because he lives on the second or third floor, and I'm like, well, first of all, what are you going to do? You can't get out. You're going to be stuck there for days, and um, and people aren't going to be able to come to you. So hopefully, people have heeded those warnings, and uh, you know, we'll see. But uh, but it is concerning. You've got you know, I don't know how many people, but a lot of people, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, who have evacuated to another part of the state and now find themselves kind of tar being targeted by the storm. So that poses an additional challenge to traffic and the like once the thing passes. Senator, I know we'll all be together afterwards and during, and, and can't thank you enough. Appreciate the time. All right, thank you. Thanks for bringing me on.
Mr. Long, how has Irma's swing farther to the west changed your assessment of, of the storm? Has it become more dangerous or less dangerous? Uh, this is a worst case scenario for uh, Monroe County, Florida Keys, and the west coast of Florida. Anytime you're in that northeast quadrant um, as a storm is moving forward, that's where uh, the maximum radius winds are that define the intensity of the storm. That's where storm surge is most prevalent. And, and uh, you know, the inland winds are going to be tough. And, and also, you know, 80% of your uh, landfall and hurricanes bring with them tornadoes. So we're already seeing some tornado watches and warnings spread across the state. Does Irma's new course put more people in jeopardy. Are folks now in Alabama and Georgia, are they more now in more danger with this new path? So we're in good communication with Alabama as well, and they're, def they're definitely watching this storm. Any shift to the west has implications for them, uh, and we're also in great communication with Georgia as well, because as this thing moves inland, you know, that tornado threat's going to persist. Uh, inland rains are going are, are to persist as well. So uh, we're moving very quickly. The president has uh, been in great communication not only with me, but been moving very swiftly to put the proper declarations in place. And so today it's all about... Uh, you know, as the pres president requested from me last night, he said, uh, do everything you can to take care of people, and that's what we're doing. We're positioning as many teams and commodities in place today and ready to go. Over the next few hours, Mr. Long, what is your biggest immediate concern? And does the fact that the storm is going up the Gulf Coast, uh, which means bigger storm surges, how big a concern is that right now? Storm surge uh, has the highest potential to kill the most amount of people and cause the most amount of damage. Uh, and so, you know, my biggest concern is when people um, fail to heed a warning early uh, from local government officials and then they make a last minute ditch to try to get to uh, a, a shelter or into a facility uh, to withstand the winds. And, and in some cases, the water starts to rise and they get trapped because they didn't heed the warning early. And that's, that's my greatest concern. Uh, you know, we, we care about people and try to put that message out. And uh, sometimes people listen and sometimes they don't. It, is it too late for people to try to get out? And I'm talking about people now, let's say, up to, to, to Naples. Is it too late or Fort Myers? Uh, should they shelter in place? Uh, well, it's too late for, for folks in the Monroe, uh, Monroe County, Florida Keys. Uh, maximum radius winds in the eye are moving over as we speak right now. Um, it's going to be very hard to uh, get out of the Keys. Um, I'm sure, you know, if, if you are going to move and leave southwest Florida from, you know, Marco Island on up the coast, your time is running out. Uh, you know, and in some cases, if the water starts to rise around you and you become isolated, um, try to get into a facility that you think can withstand the winds and get elevated, get out of the storm surge. One of the big changes in FEMA since Hurricane uh, Katrina is that you folks are now more proactive uh, in terms of positioning personnel, positioning equipment than, than FEMA used to be before. But I wonder, w with this change, because we kept thinking until, what, the last 24 hours, it was headed up the, the East Coast, the Atlantic Coast, now to the Gulf Coast. Does that mean that you, some of your equipment and people are out of position? Is that going to create a new problem? No, not at all. Um, you know, we've been in great position. Uh, we're leaning way far forward, and, and we've had people and teams uh, in place. I actually have liaisons in 11 counties, uh, you know, on the uh, west side of Florida, working directly with local emergency managers to make sure we understand uh, what the state's demands are and what the local demands are so that we can help backfill their capabilities. Uh, we, we pushed three days' worth of commodities in, uh, ready to go. But, you know, it's going to take some time. This is a complex event because of the south to north trajectory of the storm. The power is going to be out for a long time. It's going to be tough for us to uh, get in to perform search and rescue of South Florida. We have to wait till that, you know, to, till all the elements pass through. Uh, this is a complex event, but uh, as far as positioning goes, you know, we, we, we've done all, pretty much all we can. Finally, sir, uh, you, of course, are still dealing with Hurricane Harvey, and Congress just passed $15 billion in disaster relief to deal with that. But do you have the money you need? Do you have the, the people you need to deal with the situation in the southeast United States, Florida, and neighboring states post Irma? Sure. So uh, the Congress uh, did its due diligence and, you know, passed the supplemental to allow us to uh, keep moving. And as I've been saying, paperwork and money should not get in the way of saving lives. And I, I believe the Congress recognizes that. There's great communication between the White House and the Congress in regards to emergency management. So uh, right now we're moving forward. I have all the authorities from the president I need to be able to move forward as well. 
And, um, you know, once the system passes through, it's going to be a race to save lives and sustain lives. Mr. Long, thank you. Thanks for talking to us on this very tough morning, sir. Yep. Thank you.